stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin.
good morning again. Nearing this time of the year again, Christmas. Obviously, that comes with some beautiful weather for snowmobiling, anyway. If you want to shorten winter, I suggest get a snowmobile. That really shortens winter. You've got at least a month where you can snowmobile. <laughs> anyway, today I want to talk about a gift that God has given us, but we have to ask for it. It's not dropped in on our laps. It's something we have to ask for. And it's something we all need. There is no denying of it. If, as you grow in Christ, it's something you definitely need. And uh, for, uh, I want uh, Brenda to put the first scripture up there. It's out of James 1, five, verse 5 to 6. If any of you lack wisdom, most of us do, let him ask, God, uh, ask of God that gives to all men liberally, and upbraids not. That means uh, without reproof or scold angrily. That up upbraid. And it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, not wavering. For he that wavers, uh, wavers is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. So that's what you need to do when you want wisdom. Wisdom is like the love of Jesus. It's not something you have that's yours. It's given to you. It's got to, you love, if, you have, if you love somebody, it has to be with the love of Jesus Christ. Otherwise, it's superficial and fake. You can love somebody for, that's your friend, but Jesus said, love your enemies. Do good unto them that despitefully use you or forsake or, or uh, misuse you. So there's a love that only Jesus can give to actually love somebody that is not lovable. And it's not humanly possible to do that. Anyway, before I go into the rest of my message, let's rise and ask the Lord for his blessings. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much that you have allowed us to come before your throne of grace and we can ask if we waver not. And Lord Jesus, I pray that this will be something that we all take seriously. We can ask you for wisdom, to live our lives with wisdom. Lord, we need to apply wisdom to all areas of our lives, how to interact with people, how to deal with people, because this is what ultimately we deal with, is with people. And when it comes to that, we always seem to overreact and act out of uh, a frustration, anger, and we usually say wrong things. So, Lord, you will protect us from that and help us to ask you for wisdom and, and not answer right away when we, when we think we need to, but just keep silent and let your Holy Spirit, through wisdom, guide our lips and our hearts. In Jesus' name I pray this. Amen. You may be seated. In Proverbs 2, verse 10, out of the King James Version, it says, uh, When wisdom enters into, into your heart and knowledge is pleasant unto your soul, discretion shall preserve thee. <clears throat> Understanding will keep you to deliver you from the way of the evil man, from the man that speaks forward things. That means forward in this case means you speak things where you're stubborn, stubbornly set in your wrong ideas. So it keeps you from being stubborn in the wrong things. In Proverbs 3, verse 13 to 22, King James Version. Happy is the man that finds wisdom. Wisdom here is, is not human wisdom. Again, I reiterate that it's, it's something that has to be divinely given to you. It's like Jesus. Jesus and wisdom you couldn't separate. But wisdom is part, of, to me, for me, it's part of growing because when I first got saved, I can honestly tell you, uh, I reacted out of human wisdom a lot of times when I told people about Jesus uh, because I didn't have wisdom uh, per se as the Bible talks about wisdom here. It was basically reaction that I uh, used to tell people about Christ, action, or, or out of reaction. That's how I operated. And then when you have wisdom, to sow the seed, you do it wisely. You don't go plant seed in a, seed in a field that's not ready. It has to be prepared. A, a man's heart has to be ready to receive seed. 
So when you're a young believer, you tend to go out and sow seed just by throwing. You just throw it. Wherever it lands, you're hoping it's going to bear fruit and bear seed, uh, uh, bear more fruit. But that's good too. In the beginning, God uses that. That's how he does it. But once you become wise, a wise farmer, you don't do that. You don't want to waste seed on rocky ground. So you, do, you tend to uh, apply wisdom to that and then that God gives you. And he leads you by his spirit. Uh, for, the for the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain, therefore, than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies. And all the things you can desire are not to be compared unto her. Length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. And here, it's almost like she's talking about, uh, uh, Solomon is talking about Jesus here. She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her. It's just like Jesus is a tree of life to us. So is wisdom. And happy is everyone that retains her. The Lord by wisdom has founded the earth. By understanding has he established the heavens. By his knowledge the depths are broken up and the clouds drop down the dew. My son and daughter, let not them depart from your eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. So shall they be life unto your soul and grace to your neck. Back to James 3, verse 17, out of King James Version. And that, that'll conclude my part of the message here. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure. See, that tells you it's something that's imparted to you. It's from above. The wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easily to be entreated. Entreated in this case means easily allows us to under, understand things as they really are. Full of mercy and good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy. And with that, it concludes my part of the message. Short, but you know what? Apply it to your heart. Ask God for wisdom in all areas of your life. Make, make it a step. If you run into issues, ask God for wisdom. Ask him and he will give you wisdom, wisdom on how to handle every situation you run into. And if you have wisdom, you know you will make the right choice in life. Amen. We're getting close to Christmas. Things are happening. A lot of snow. Um, God is definitely trying his children these days to have patience. But I want to preach a message that I kind of stole from James last week. Just bits of it. Don't mind it. Okay. Okay. I'll put a little bit of uh, I'll really spice it up. Anyway. Try to. Uh, people today don't understand a lot of them. We may already understand, but a lot of people don't un understand what true Christianity is. They figure if a guy lives right, he does good, he feeds the poor, he does everything, all those things, Ah, that guy's a Christian. When I speak to people or listen about people that live in religious organizations, I cannot believe how deceived they are. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man 
comes unto the Father, but by me. Taken after religious ideology, it's only through Jesus. But how does that happen? You become a new creation in Christ Jesus when you become born again. Jesus answered, that's in John 3, 5. Jesus has answered and said, Verily, I say unto thee, except the man be born of water and of the Spirit, and cannot enter into he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of spirit is spirit. I say unto you, you cannot be born. You cannot. You must be born again. Born again. Jesus answered, said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born again? Can you? Can that happen? You cannot. It is physically impossible to be born physically twice. Let's think about that. The spiritual runs parallel with the natural. If you cannot be born physically, Twice, you cannot be born spiritually twice. It's a one-time deal. That which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of spirit of spirit. I want to ask you guys a question. Are you born of flesh? Of course you are. You're not made of titanium or copper or stainless steel. Some think they are. That's okay. You are born of flesh. So something has to change. Why? That which is born of flesh is full of Disease, full of sin, full of all sorts of things that Satan has laid out in store for you. And that has to be put into the ground. It'll never go to heaven because flesh cannot be born again. How many of you? You know that. How many of you know people who think they can be born again through the flesh? I know a few people. Try your best. You got to live for God. You cannot have any evil thoughts. You cannot do this. You cannot do that. I'm sorry. You're a human being, and you're going to fail. And while you're in the flesh, you are going to have these problems. But at the same time, God did something else. You were born of the Spirit. How many of you, through the Internet, are born of the Spirit? Anybody here born of the Spirit? You can lift your hand if you're born again. I'm born of the Spirit. I remember it clearly.
God changed my heart. I became a different person. My attitude changed. And guess what? God made me a new creature. Not flesh, but spirit. When God touched me, he made me complete. And then he did something. Like he did in the Old Testament. When the Jewish people became Jews. When they were eight days old, God did something. What did he do? He told them, go get circumcised. Why? Circumcision is a personal thing. I'll ask you, have you got a personal relationship with Jesus? And you'll say, well, I don't quite understand that language. That tells me you don't have a clue what I'm talking about. Do you have a personal relationship with Jesus? If you don't, you do not have the spirit of the living God in you. So if you're born of the spirit, you're born not in the flesh, but in the spirit through the power of the Holy Ghost. When the Jews were eight years old, God come up with something that is quite interesting. It's called circumcision. Anybody circumcised here? Come on, you got somebody. Well, if nobody, can you reverse circumcision? I've studied that. Guess what? You're not going to reverse circumcision because it's gone. That's what happened to you. God circumcised your heart and your sin and your nakedness are what? Gone. Amen. Gone. Will circumcision come back? No. Will sin come back? No. Why? God throw them from you as far as the east is from the west. You have become a new creation in Christ Jesus. You're totally something else. Yes, we're walking in the flesh. I'm one of those guys that lately found out what it means to walk in the flesh. And let me tell you, sometimes it's not comfortable. But to walk in the spirit is not always comfortable either. You got rejected. You got reproved. You got shunned. You get pushed aside. I've experienced all those things from father, mother, brothers, sisters. Just aside with you. We don't want nothing to you, do with you. Why? The spirit that was in me, they could not see. But I knew. I didn't change. I stayed with this God. And guess what? My sins are forgiven. My sins are thrown into the sea of forgetfulness. I can relax in sickness and in health, knowing my end is going to be perfect. Hallelujah. Why? Because Jesus is perfect. That's why I'll be perfect. 
God said, the Bible teaches us, no man comes to the Father but by Jesus. They can have all sorts of religions. And when we look at our, our loved ones, they're all groping around on religious fig leaves trying to somehow bring those fig leaves around their middle parts so God wouldn't see their nakedness. Will God see their nakedness? Yes. That's not what covers your nakedness. What covers your nakedness? The blood of Jesus Christ. You're pure, you're holy, as white as snow in the eyes of God. This is what God gave you. The day you accepted him as Christ Jesus, and you meant it. So, the Bible teaches us, marvel not, you must be born again, as it was thousand. 2,000 years ago, so it is today. It hasn't changed. I don't care how they try to soften the gospel, how they try to somehow uh, put it aside, it's going to stay. Why? Because it's written. And at the judgment bar of God, Guess what's going to be our judge? Not our good works. No. Not our bad works. The book of life is going to be our judge. Who wrote the book of life? God did. Where is the book of life? It's the word of God. Hallelujah. My name is in the book of life. How do I know? I've read the book. Read it yourself. Find out. Your name is written in there if you mean go business with God. You don't have to go from church to church to this and that. Your name is written in the book of life if you will search for it with a heart that is pure. So seek it out. We have become a new, beautiful creation. And no power in hell will take it from us. In John chapter 3, verse 18, there is no judgment against anyone who believes in him. What does that mean? There's no judgment. If there's no judgment, there's no sin. Hallelujah. I'm free. Why don't people see that? It's as clear as daylight. But they love darkness more than they love the light of God's word. That's the problem. But anybody who does not believe in him has already been judged for not believing in God's one and only Son is judgment, and that's it. Do you believe in God, in the Son of God? You can believe in God. Hindus believe in God's, many gods. 350 million of them. They don't even have to go to church. They can have one right home because they got so many gods, they got them stacked in their houses. So when there's a storm, pick down one of the pot bellies, start praying to it. But we have a God that we can't see, but also we have a God that we can feel. Have you felt this God? 
Have you felt this God? I have. This is why I know that I know that I'm going to heaven. Not because I felt this God, but because it is written my names in the Lamb's book of life. So open your heart to these interesting truths. Study it for yourself. Some of you may have trouble with assurance of salvation. Read these scriptures. Study them. Take them to your heart. And God will split your head and you will feel that anointing come on you. And once the assurance of salvation comes upon you, you got a special authority. I want to repeat that again. Once assurance of salvation comes upon you, you have that special authority. And not only that, a special anointing. So open your heart and become a blessing to yourself. Amen. Hold him on.